presidency thing. This is not a debate. There will be no back and forth between candidates or candidates in the audience. Civility is paramount. After all, we're all part of this beautiful family of New Ipswich. Um, I distributed a sheet um, with some uh, basic rules for the meeting, um, but there's quite a bit of interest um, expressed ahead of this meeting, uh, so we felt that adding uh, time constraints uh, would help us not have to be out until about 2 o'clock in the morning um, and keep uh, discussions um, uh, lively um, and productive. So candidates will have an initial three minutes to introduce themselves. Uh, oh, sorry, apologize, I introduced myself, Sean Talbot the select board. Um, Bob Romerl, our moderator, wasn't available this evening, um, so I will be um, filling the, the, the role of moderator this evening. Um, you may ask um, one to 10 standard questions of each candidate um, in each respective race. Uh, the candidates will have two minutes to respond uh, to each of those questions. Um, those are standardized questions that I've reached out to some of the candidates and some community members um, to solicit some uh, thoughts and opinions on. Um, and I've gone through and screened a few um, for the planning board race and then also um, the school board race. After that um, section, the candidate will have a total of 30 minutes um, to take questions from the audience. Audience participants will have one minute to ask their question, and candidates will have two minutes to respond to the question. Once that segment is con uh, concluded, um, candidates will then have one minute for a closing statement. So, all audience members who wish to participate uh, must ask a question when at the microphone and not spend their time on the microphone to make their own generalized or pointed statements. Uh, one warning will be given before not being recognized to ask any subsequent questions. Uh, with that, uh, I ask, is, there, is Betty in the room? I didn't get a response back. Then, so. <coughs> So we'll move on to planning board candidates uh, with Jane Elwell, Ray Holmes, Josh Mahonen, and Bruce Ratzla uh, are all running for two slots um, for two three-year terms. Uh, would you please, if you're in the room and you wish to speak, please come up uh, to the stage.
selected by a few. I will use my 56 years um, experience living in six different countries, five different states and communities from very rural to major cities and I'll use common sense to make decisions for this town. Um, I also ran to keep certain people off the town boards. Now I believe that if you have lawsuits filed against this town, you have no right to be making decisions for people as a member of any of the boards. Um, we've had two people on the planning board suing this town right now, and we don't need a third. And I urge you to please vote for Graham Peaky and on um, the two-year um, the two-year board for the planning board, please. So thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions for me? Standard. Okay. Just a few standard questions you want to ask uh, okay. of each of the planning board candidates. Right. Uh, number one, what are the most critical land use mm -hmm. issues facing the switch? Okay, um, I think it's affordable housing for incoming residents. This town is beautiful and people are finding it, um, but they need places to live. Um, when I say that though, I mean we, we are still a rural town. We do not want to grow into some you know, we don't want to be Milford, we want to stay a rural town, but we do need housing for people. Um, and I think the boards need to also recognize and help new businesses thrive. During COVID, people stayed home a lot. They enjoyed being at home. They want to build their businesses near where they live. They don't want to, to be traveling, you know, far to do that. And I think the, the planning board needs to help businesses thrive, whether it's working from home, or whether it's building a business in town. But I think the planning board is there to guide people through the planning um, you know, applications and, and not make it difficult. It should be something that, that they're helping people to do. So, and that's what I want to do. I want to guide people through that process. Thanks. Okay, a couple more. Okay. okay. So those three questions uh, for okay. each planning board member for uh, candidate. How does the planning board meet its legal requirement to require compliance with land use regulations and at the same time serve the needs of residents and businesses in New York Search? Okay. Common sense. That is my biggest thing, is common sense. I think we're losing a lot of common sense around here. Um, the, we should follow the town regulations, but we've got to use common sense to tweak them to this is not a one-size-fit-all town. Nobody is the same around here. Every application, every, every situation is different. Um, you have to, like I said before, you have to work with the applicants to get them through the planning board um, process for what they want to do in the town. And as long as it follows the regulations, you, you're good to go. Um, but using that common sense to make sure, you know, that, that they... Um, are doing the right thing, but within the boundaries of, you know, the regulations and so on. The final question, should the planning board support increasing the supply of affordable housing for families that want to live in our great town? And if so, how can they do that? Okay. Um, I think we've got, to, we've got to keep in mind the lot sizes and the setbacks and making sure that they're still reasonable. Uh, and keep the feel of the town and make sure it's enjoyable to all. But then we've got to work with the applicants who want to, to build. Um, like I said before, keeping in mind that we're a rural town, we don't want to be the next Milford. We want to keep our, our you know, chunks of our lots big enough, but you know, it would be nice to have some more people come to this town, um, building up businesses and bringing taxes in. What? what? Yeah, you're willing to entertain some questions yeah, from the I'll audience? Take, I'll take right. some questions. If <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> so. Been made known to the boards or whoever. So I'm 
spoke to um, in the town, um, he needs to look into setbacks, uh, you know, making sure that they're, they're um, you know, adhered to. Um, if it's gone to the planning board and they've, they've looked into it, they've got to hear both sides of the story. There's never, it's never a one-sided thing. It's got to hear both sides of the story. Um, and that's what I, I would want to do if I'm on the planning board. I want to hear both sides of the story and, and then go from there. Um, I'm sorry it's a situation you're, you're in, but I think it's just a matter of being patient and making sure that everybody, all the residents, uh, are happy with the situation. Okay, can I ask you another follow-up? Sure. I am one of the landlords that's being recruited for. Okay. And I can, I could go to the, the border of my property, point to the ground as I'm pointing here at the pin that they went into the property. Right. And yet, six feet away is the beginning of the slope which by a letter, I didn't even take you me as an example. And I'll just say, I'm just an abstract that there is a banking of, of dirt mm -hmm. that just goes down the road, almost vertically. And we've brought issues on, not that I have, but the issues that we brought to the planning board for this letter. And still, no, no, no remedy. And I wonder what happens when that gets away and the lot line has to be, my lot line has to be moved from where it is now, so I think about 10 feet, the whole way. I mean, that's, that's the case. That, that big amount of line I'm talking here and now, it just happens to come to mind to do a time all the way to do it, you know, the issue you mm -hmm. look at. Earl, if you could bring it back to a question. Um, if you could just bring it back to a question. Did I, did I run out of time? Yeah, I didn't bother well, saying I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing I would suggest um, uh, is, is can, can you ask for a site visit from the planning board? Can you ask them to actually come out and look? See? Yes, if it's well, it does have I'm sure it is. I'm sure every resident can request something like that. I'll keep it in mind. Okay. Thank you for your answer. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Hi, I'm Susan Clay. Hi. Um, the term affordable housing makes me cringe. It does I am found from the city and I moved here to get away from affordable housing. Affordable housing is crime and drugs, loud parties, um, all kinds of things that actually make your taxes go up because you need more police presence to deal with all the issues that come with that. Okay. So I don't want affordable housing. You know, my husband and I, we saved our money. Point of order. Is that a question? Okay, so I want to know, what is, what is affordable housing? In, in my mind, I think, I mean, I understand completely what you're saying is affordable housing. I'm from London, I'm from the city too. I, I know all about that stuff. Um, I've lived in major cities all over the world. Um, it's not what I think of when I think of New Ipswich. I think of staying rural. We're a rural town. Um, I think it needs to stay rural. But it's so hard for young people to get into the marketplace with housing now. And if there are people in this town that are willing to build, you know, smaller houses or, but like I said, keep the keep the lots the same. We don't we don't need um, we don't need track housing. We don't need you know um, what do you call it the um, subdivisions everywhere. We need we still need to keep that in check. I think. But I don't I don't I agree with you. We do not need um, whether it's your interpretation of affordable housing. I understand that, yeah. Okay, may I follow up? Oh, if I, is there anybody else that would like to ask a question? Okay. Sir? Yep. Craig Smee, I've sat on the planning board for on and off for about four years. Earl, 
the answer to your question earlier should have been the select. They are the people that are responsible for taking care of the issue. Correct. If you could, we're not trying to correct each person's questions and okay. answers this evening. Just trying to but if you have a question it. for Ms. Elwell, uh, um, please. My question would be the state and the town as RSAs that they have to abide by. How do you do implement common sense and navigate in between those directives? <coughs> Because like I said, there is not a one size fits all for everybody. Nobody has the exact same situation and the exact same um, application in, whether it's to the ZBA or to the planning board or wherever. Um, we have to use common sense as a town to tweak the, the application to fit the, the person and their needs. We are not here to say, no, 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 on absolutely everything. We've got to look and see, and if it goes with the regulations, and it's, it's, we're following the, the um, our RSAs, but we've got, to, we've got to look at the individuals and what they want to do, and help them and guide them through, through the applications. And you know, if they're doing the right things, they're following the RSAs and they're, um, they're, you know, they're able to do all the things we need to do, then, then I don't see why their application can't be approved. Um, just going back to, you were talking about um, building smaller houses but on the same track of land. Um, unless, are you, are you house, housing builders, I know, I know many of them, mm -hmm. they don't build small houses because they don't make any money. <laughs> so how would you go about doing that? Is the town going to get into the business of building houses to do that? Because that, and if you're talking about having uh, lower prices, it sounds like price fixing, which is also another, like, ism, socialism, communism thing. So I just am wondering how you go about doing that. I'm not a town planner. I don't, in, in the, the sense of, of right now, I don't, you know, I don't know what is in the works right now um, with the planning board. Um, but I just asked, answered your question of what my thoughts were, were, were in affordable housing. Oh, I'm not trying to be mean or anything. Oh, no, I'm curious yeah. as to where your, your mind is with right. that. I enjoy seeing the new houses it's, being it's built here. It's an open market, and you can't hold <coughs> an open market. I completely understand. Right. I know. I just, I do think, though, that it's really hard for young people to get into the market. Um, right now. I mean, houses are ridiculously expensive. Any newlyweds trying to get into a new house, it's so hard for them. But, you know, everyone's got to start somewhere. But if New Ipswich, if, if that's the place where we, we don't have, you know, cheap, cheaper houses, then that's what it's going to be. I just, I just think that as long as we abide by um, all the lot sizes and the, set, the setbacks and make it, or keep it rural, I think we're going to be okay in this town. We don't want to grow to a Milford, but we've got plenty of room. This town is huge, spread out. I mean, we've got plenty of room to be able to invite more people to this town and build businesses and bring in taxes. So. Any other questions? <laughs> yes. Liz? I'm just curious, it seems to suggest that the planning board doesn't help applicants through the process. Do you know how many applications the planning board has denied in the past five to ten years? No, but I'm sure you do. Yeah, none that I'm aware of. Okay. Well, that's good. Yes. Would you be in favor of a zoning adjustment that would allow for smaller lots if there was a cap on footage for the house side. So that way you can encourage people to build smaller houses on smaller lots. So instead of maybe a two acre lot, you go to the one acre lot, but it's a 1200 square foot maximum for the house size. So we're not building these big mansions on half acre lots like the scar on one side of that court right now. Kind of just decided that it looks awful. I, I'm, I don't want to um, speak about that at all. I don't, I don't know, you know, um, 
what the, I don't think the lot size should be smaller, put it that way. Um, I really don't. I want to keep this town rural. It is a rural town. That doesn't, I, like I said in, in all my answers to all of this, it's keeping the lot sizes the same, I think, is what will keep us rural. Any other questions? No, I'm good. Like I said, I, I, I urge you to vote on the three-year term for Bruce and for Josh. They have been great people on the planning board. And for the two-year term, um, please vote for Graham. He's a great guy. Um, if for some reason I do get elected, I would gladly represent this town on the planning board. But I think these guys have way more experience. So thank you.
onerous, make sure they're not things that are increasing costs for building. Um, but I do realize that we're in a market system, and, and to some extent, land is worth a certain amount and house is worth a certain amount, and that's that's a challenge. Um, because like I said, especially young people can be really priced out right now. Um, one avenue to do this, and like I said, I don't want a heavy hand government approach. Ideally, it would be something where working together with the town, the developer can come up with a, you know, a solution to get us what we want, which is some affordable housing, um, but while also not prescribing something for them, requiring them to do something. Um, so one thing that has been in process with the board is just going through drafting stage on kind of an alternate path that would allow for a small increase in density if there's some affordability, um, you know, limits set on those additional lots. So we're not taking anything away from the builder, we're giving them an option to, to do a little more. Um, and yeah, overall it should be voluntary rather than coerced. We should have a good working relationship with developers because at the end of the day, they're the ones doing the work turning the town into something. And do we like or do we not like what they're turning it into is, you know, maybe in some ways that's on us if we're, if we have a toxic relationship with them. It should be, you know, we should be communicating with them what we would like and if they can, you know, voluntarily help us, that would be great. Tina? Um, hi. Are you aware of Agenda 2030 and what are your thoughts when the government um, sets forth um, things to change the way our town is to comply with this um, directive? Like 15 minutes, 15 minute cities and towns. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I would like the as many decisions as possible to be made at as you know close a level as government as possible. So not only do I not want the federal government telling us what to do, ideally I wouldn't like the state government to either. They should be collecting as little money as possible and not giving us anything, keeping their fingers out of it as much as they can. So obviously at the town level, you know, we're just gonna deal with some of the things they do, unfortunately. Okay, thank you. Earl? I have a quick question. Yep. How many years have you, have you been on the board Yep, I've served one year. So how many years have you been on? I've been on one year. One, one year? Yep. Thank you. Tim? Hey, uh, Tim Sauber of the Twitch. Uh, can you share any ideas that you have on outreach, education, and communicating progress with the town's people. Because I think education is key and it's really hard for the planning board to showcase some of the work they've done. Yeah, exactly. That's that's tough. It's it's tough when our avenue for you know getting information out is posting in the newspaper. It's like that's the avenue we have, but how effective is it? Probably not very. Um, I don't know. I think at the end of the day, a lot of it, you know, we are a small town, but we're a very connected town. A lot of it is person to person. You get into, um, uh, it was mentioned in our last planning board meeting, the informal leaders in town. You know, there's people that know people. And at the end of the day, I think, you know, when the planning board has representation from different age groups and different, you know, sectors of town that can't help to get the word out for things because um, I know I tell people I'm on the board and often that leads to a conversation of what are, what are you guys doing here? You know, what should you be doing at this all these things. So other than putting that highway department sign up and flashing things on it that we want to get out, <laughs> maybe that's the best option, but maybe it's an eyesore. So <laughs> I, I don't know exactly. <laughs> Right. Bruce, yes. um, you've been on the planning board for about a year now. Yes. Uh, a lot of questions have come up about affordable housing. Yes. How can the board use accessory dwelling units to 
help fix the problem for first time homeowners? Yes. Um, I think accessory fills a very important need in the market for um, for rental housing, especially. And it, you know, I see it all over town. I know amounts of people that are in you know living in an accessory dwelling unit because they're newlyweds and they need somewhere to go. Often those are you know more affordable because it's you know it might even be a relative that owns the unit. Um, so I think that's important. However, at the end of the day, I am a very strong believer in home ownership. And I think that's like a huge building block for the town. So when you talk about affordability, but also not wanting to turn into the slums, like in this town, you know, the average income is eight, six thousand or whatever that number is right now. Um, so I don't think these are necessarily layabout people. These are hardworking people that, you know, have some resources, but I think the way that they become most, most um, invested in the town is through ownership. So that's why, you know, it's a challenge, but we might need, you know, some flexibility around density or something to get people into homes possible. So that's when we worked on um, the ADU regulation that's on the ballot. Um, it's just trying to give a little more flexibility on um, you know, options and, and situations that you can use ADUs. Um, the, like I mentioned before, the um, you know, optional path for development, that's something we worked on and didn't make it on the ballot and needed more work before we got here. Um, and <laughs> I, I was told this would have, would be the year that we did, you know, made progress on master plan, but <laughs> that hasn't happened yet. So hopefully that's in the next year. Yeah. I'm very concerned about this accessory dwelling units because essentially you're going to have a more transient population. You're going to have more use of roads. Um, septic systems are going to be, um, because there's not going to be a separate one for that, they're going to be hooked up to whatever is already there. So, you know, ecologically, it's just it's, it's not good for the town. You're, you're going to change the town. It's not going to be a rural town. It's going to be like a city. I, I don't understand how that is supposed to help people to get a house. So, I think the I, I haven't seen it. I, I don't see that that's what we have in this town. What, what I see with accessory dwelling units and with the use of accessory dwelling units is exactly for people that are growing up here, people that are trying to stay here. If you're, you know, if you're a transient, I don't think notice is just great for you. The, you know, we don't have a ton of services. We don't, you know, I, I don't find that. You're not understanding. Here. I'm not talking about people that are homeless. I'm talking about normally when when I live in the city, my husband and I See, are you bring in a question. Well I'm sort of trying to ask the question. Yeah. You know, renters only stay, you know, from my perspective and what I saw in my neighborhood, a year, two years, they're constantly changing over. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I don't you know that would make this more like a city with a constant changeover of people than a community that is rural and country. 
yes, the goal is that they're moving into home ownership, but right now there's no other option. I mean, how many apartments are there in town? Oh, there's, you know, two apartment buildings and, you know, maybe some kind of like, this is a necessary thing. I don't, I don't want the, you know, half of the housing stock of the town to be rental units. That's not my goal to create this huge rental stock, but that is a certain slice of the market that is very important because somebody gets married, they have a limited income, and they're not moving immediately into a house, what do they do? Well, move to Nashville. Well, I don't think that's a good option. And I don't think, you know, our goal is to not close the door on people that, that are trying to come up and that are trying to live here. So, you know. So you, you don't see a problem with these like five, 10, 15 years down the road? Because it, it's, it looks like a can of worms. I don't. Okay. Disappointment. <laughs> yes. We're talking accessory dwelling units. Can you define in real world terms like what that looks like? Are we talking like in-law apartment over the garage? Or are we talking like, you know, a camper so you just place a lot kind of yeah. accessory? Like, can you give me an idea of like what a couple of these different kinds of accessory dwelling units are? Yeah, typically accessory dwelling has been finished basement, finished, you know, space over the garage. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong. Um, barn, yes. So something that has an appearance of a garage or barn that's detached. So it's it's supposed to be fitting the form and character of the main home. So you don't drive by and say, oh, there's two homes. It's like, oh, there's a home with a garage and, you know, somebody happens to live up there. Oh, so you're not talking about, like, in the cities where they have these sheds and these tiny homes parked in their backyard. I don't believe that's currently allowed by our regulation, but, yeah. Tim, I, I took some of the website. So I'm on the planning board currently, and it took me a long time to learn. Um, and there's a certificate of occupancy that's required. And there's a lot of law that, and I'm happy to have a conversation with either uh, you, Tina, sorry, thanks, and Philip. Um, but Bruce, what is your experience and what do you see from ongoing continuing education if the townspeople reelect you? What is, what is your source of truth other than the people in the planning board or something else? Where do you go and uh, learn on any of these issues? Yeah. Um, obviously there's you know education that we have available to us um, through the state and that kind of thing, but really my source of truth is the people in the real world situations I've seen day in and day out. 